when you hear the terminality modern slavery, you know, and that slavery word is something that people think about many, many years ago that doesn't exist anymore. I think what we need to realise is that it is very, very much here and that's why our team were created in terms of challenging this slavery that is going on. There was a report from a member of the public around a suspected brothel in Blackburn. Uh, some police community support officers attended the address and spoke with two of the victims in this case. While they were there, the head of this group of men turned up and he was asked by the PCSOs, why is it that so many Eastern European women are living in Blackburn at the moment? And his answer was, because they love sex. And to me that sums up exactly how this group feel about women. Again, they're a commodity. They earn their money, they work for them. They would often target boyfriends of these females in Romania and ask them to bring them across. They would then be drove to locations throughout the northwest where sexual services would be offered. They would take a percentage of the money, a percentage of the money would go to the lead of the gang and a percentage of the money would go to the drivers. And the money from the investigation showed that it was going just to their men exploiting these vulnerable females. What the investigation showed is that the locations and the distance didn't matter to these men. They would take them to hotels in Blackpool, they would take them to residential properties in Wigan, they would take them to Merseyside. It, it didn't matter, there was a point we picked up where um, people from Cumbria were using their services. So in terms of the distance, it didn't matter to these men. And I think that shows again the level of money these people were earning, because it, it just didn't matter. There was a particular evening where uh, one of the females was taken to three different clients within three to four hours and the surveillance picked up on the driver purchasing painkillers which we're, we're adamant was certainly wasn't for him. And I think that just shows the pain um, that these women are going through continuously at the hands of these men. The head and the boss of the organised crime group was a Florinel Raswan Mitru. Below him were a number of men who trafficked their girlfriends into this country for sexual exploitation. Ionet Degaru, Marius Traska, Alexander Baltoyu, Alexandru Pitigoy, Trian Gavrilla. All those men were in large control of putting advertisements on the internet advertising these girls, uh, making sure their vehicles were purchased putting fraudulent insurance on the cars so they couldn't move around so they wouldn't be stopped. And in terms of the drivers of those cars were Catalin Yudaki, Marian Diaconu, Marius Dide. And all those group have been found guilty. It would be very rare that we'd ever see the women in the daytime, ever. Um, they were often, if they were ever out, they were in the company of a driver or their boyfriend or one of the group. Now, again, I think that, that spells out to us that they haven't got anything else. They've nothing in this country. They're clearly very controlled. Uh, again, none of the men worked. You know, any time through the day and night, we never saw any sort of employment for the men. All we ever saw them doing was moving the females around the northwest um, for the purpose of sexual exploitation. One statement that, that rings true about this case is a, a young female was targeted by her boyfriend. Um, we picked all this up on telephone evidence that he was approached by the head of the group. He was asked to bring his girlfriend over. He was told what he would be paid what the gang would take, what the security of the gang would take, what the driver would take, which when you add it all up, it leaves in zero for the female. They brought her over into the country with the boyfriend and within a very short period of time, she was working as a prostitute. Now, even on that telephony evidence, he raised the concern that she doesn't like it. And all the group's answer was, well, she'll get over it and it's all about the money. And that was their answer and that's the answer to this you know, operation. It is all about the money for these men, not the feelings of the women, not what the women are going through. They are severely exploited. They don't see them as people. Um, they, they, they see them as objects. Um, 
I think to be say they treat them as second class would be much higher than is, than they actually do treat them. I think in some cases they're, they're treated like animals. Um, they're expected to work in what I would describe as a very difficult and probably heartbreaking profession for a woman, in my opinion, um, and receive nothing for it. And the, the only way I can and term that is they are treated like slaves. When we started the human trafficking team up in Lancashire, our vision was to run victimless prosecutions because of the very reasons of they, the women in this case, or in many cases out of the country, are told that often that they are worthless, they have such control over them that they will never, they will never give a statement. You know, they can't. So of all the women, the number of women who were victims in this case, not one of them gave a statement supporting the prosecution and what had happened to them. But because of the, the investigation and what we'd built up, we knew what was happening. We knew what they were doing to them. And, that, and that's why we acted, you know, and I, I hope this sends a message out to groups of offenders and to victims that we will build a case up without victim support or not.